Daram Show. Ready for the show. Hashtag Sadika Daram Show. Thank you so much for staying with us. As promised, we will be discussing lupus, but we don't hear a lot of discussion, a lot of activities happening around this disease. I have with me in studio Emily Dixon. She's diagnosed with lupus, been living with lupus for 11 years, and she's also joined by her wonderful husband, Julian, and they will be shedding some light on this disease. You look, you're looking gorgeous. Thank you. And when, when we hear about lupus, some persons might have a different image in mm -hmm. mind because we have been hearing stories about people who have been dying. Yes. A lot of persons have been dying with yeah. lupus. What has it been like for you living with lupus? Well, I must first of all say that I've been really blessed mm -hmm. to not have a very severe form of lupus. Although I do have a lot of the symptoms that um, everyone has, they are often mild. Mm -hmm. I've never been in the hospital because of it. So I'm really grateful for mm -hmm. that. But um, my main thing is my skin being affected. My skin, my scalp. So mm -hmm. I've lost hair. Um, I have scars, you know, mm -hmm. pretty much on my upper body. And they are painful sometimes. Oh. And then over time they heal and um, sometimes they disappear. Some stay longer than others. others. So, you know, that's that's really been my main issue. What's your type of lupus? Though? It's called discoid lupus. Mm -hmm. um, although most doctors keep thinking, oh, yes, I still have systemic, but I, systemic is more the one that affects the internal organs, and I've never had any sort mm -hmm. of issues with my internal organs. Once you decide that this thing is going to take you over in whatever way it decides to manifest itself, it, you've already... You know, mm -hmm. you're already losing the battle. And I know it's very hard for a lot of persons. And there are days when I do, you know, <laughs> get Damn, sad and yeah. ask, why did it have to happen to me? But um, I don't, I try not to spend too long in that mode. Dwelling. Yeah. And it helps to have a supportive husband, oh, Julian. I you're just looking at her <laughs> and saying, where did she where. get all this strength? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I'd be without him, honestly. Um, I find it very interesting because... Emily has always radiated this level of energy. Mm -hmm. uh, she has always been an advocate for whatever she puts her mind to. So we met um, at one of her dance shows. And at this time, she had already been diagnosed with, with lupus. But nonetheless, her radiance and everything that, that was there, you would never think that she was sick. Mm -hmm. And her beauty really is not just on the surface, but it goes within. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to support Emily. Mm -hmm. When you had, how far, how long were you diagnosed when you just uh, met? About a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost exactly. Okay. Exactly a year, so you yeah. still had locks and everything. I still had, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had to watch her change physically. Yes. Uh, and at times it was hard, but to tell you the truth, it was really what I saw inside. Uh, I really didn't see the beauty change at, mm -hmm. at any point. Uh, when the locks started to fall out, it was more of, okay, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And not necessarily to look at her in a different light, to, to be that woe is me, what have I got myself into? Mm -hmm. But it was more, okay, let's work together as a team. Let's see what we can do. And just kind of move forward, you know, finding different hairstyles and saying, okay, maybe this would work. Or maybe that would work. You know? Yeah. Uh, what, what, what is preventing um, Jamaica from having more activities? Because we do have a lot for cancer, for yes. breast cancer. Yeah. Is it because the perception is that it's not as severe as a breast I, cancer? I guess, I think so. Um, I think a lot of, a lot of people... A lot of people don't really open up about having the disease in the first place. Mm. And so you have few persons that are part of the foundation. And then on the other hand, it's so difficult to actually have that drive to get up oh. and go and do something. So between the doctors who are extremely busy <laughs> from morning till night dealing with various patients and then the patients themselves who are just too weak mm -hmm. to do anything, um, I think that that prevents us from doing a lot of the things that 
let's say, a breast cancer survivor who has gone through chemotherapy and is now living a pretty normal life mm -hmm. can get up and, and go and do, you know, because lupus tends to just keep coming back. It just, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the other aspect as well is that there is just so much information with regards to cancer and the various types of cancers out there because I think, if I'm not mistaken, there are other months. It's not just for breast cancer month. That's right. You do have other Pancreatic months for... Pancreatic cancer. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I think because of that, um, there is just a lot more information that you can find and they're still really trying to find the various reasons for the causes mm -hmm. for lupus as well as how to manage lupus as best as possible. Mm -hmm. Because <coughs> not each, each patient will, will suffer in, in a, a different, different way. way. It's, it's yeah. a very unique um, disease. So from that perspective, I think it's, it's a lot harder to, to, to do that. Mm. And on top of that, there is very little information that's given to our private insurance companies. Yeah. And therefore, the support isn't there from yeah. our private insurance uh, companies. For instance, for getting Emily on my health insurance, insurance right. uh, it was denied because oh. of, of the lupus. And there have been other cases where uh, lupus patients have been denied or their policies have been cancelled yeah. once they found out that um, the, the, the insurance company has found out yeah. that they have lupus. Mm -hmm. So there is... <clears throat> really very little recourse that they have so to manage themselves it's it's a 24 7 activity um, which not to say that it's any different from any of the other types of cancers but there is a larger level of support not just from the organizations but from people in general mm -hmm. and maybe maybe lupus patients need to speak more yeah it, their people need to become comfortable and maybe the support system will help them to communicate more about it so people can understand i think with um something that julian said about um like when insurance companies mm -hmm. find out also in your workplace you can be discriminated against once they find out that you have lupus and it's a possibility that oh you might not be able to work as well as we expect you to work. And I think that's one of the reasons a lot of persons don't say anything oh. because they look well enough. It's mm -hmm. what a lot of people call an invisible disease where you look fine, you mm -hmm. know, you look quite normal. And when a lot of pe persons don't lose their hair, you know, and they... Just other things might be happening. Right, yeah. they're happening inside. And so it, it keeps being... They keep being questioned about why are you tired all the time? Why, mm. you know, you, you were out too late or you stay up to, you know, like there are these assumptions that are made. Um, but then on the other hand, persons don't want to say anything because they want, the they, want they, they want, they need their, their income, they need their jobs. They mm -hmm. need, and a lot of lupus patients are real fighters. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to feel, which I think chronic illness brings that out a lot as well. And it's not just lupus where you have a chronic illness and you don't want anybody to feel that you can't, you know, be at Joy. your best. You, yes. you won't be able to push through like the next guy. For somebody like me, where I, I am managing quite well on limited medication, the majority of what I spend on is like supplements, which I choose to take and alternative mm -hmm. therapies like acupuncture, massage oh, therapy, you know, right. that kind of thing mm -hmm. you can look into as well. Um, but, but then I go to the dentist and <laughs> my bill is exorbitant because I don't have insurance, you know, so it, it feels a bit unfair. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't think personally I'm going to spend any more um, having insurance. I'm not going to put an insurance company out <laughs> because no. of lupus, <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> but you know, just general things that I would like some help with, I mm -hmm. can't get because I don't have insurance. The other thing is the, the NHF. They provide um, support for medications, medications, but they do it by the illness. And lupus is not, as far and as I know, lupus is not on the list. There was a, a petition started some years ago, and a lot of people signed it. I don't know if the target was reached. I know that it was brought up again and again. It was brought up with policymakers, and... Um, 
I hope it's something that's being worked on. I really do. I, I have faith <laughs> that it's being worked on. But nothing is happening yet. Mm -hmm. and, and what's unfair about it is that the same medications that are being used by patients with rheumatoid arthritis are used for lupus patients. So those medications are, are covered. And be it's just that once you say you have lupus, lupus you cannot get the, yeah. the extra assistance. So um, if there's a way for them to just provide for autoimmune diseases or the medication itself rather mm. than the, treat, the, the disease, then that would help it so really would. many persons because the, they, the medications can be extremely expensive. expensive. Mm. Again, I am very blessed in that regard because I've heard of some ladies spending upwards of $70,000 a month just to get through a month and they have to be taking and this they have every to take month these to survive not nice really not good but i think the conversation will definitely continue i do hope that someone is motivated learn something and ready again you know to walk this journey for lupus and i hope that as a society here in jamaica we might start taking some action some well-needed action too. And all the best Thank you. with you guys. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Thank you so much for watching this week. I really hope that someone was motivated and someone was inspired. Until then, I am Sadika Diaram. Let's do it.